On December 9, 1788, three and a half years before Kentucky became a state in 1792, a pioneer by the name of Robert Hodgen traveled from his home to Bardstown. He presented a petition for the establishment of a gristmill to be located on lands he owned along Nolan River. The petition was approved and the mill was constructed the next year, 1789. People who resided within a radius of several miles began to meet and congregate at Hodgins Mill, as it became commonly known. After Robert Hodgins' death in 1810, many of these same people requested members of the Hodgins family to establish a town on the Hodgins plantation. On February 7, 1818, Hodgins' sons, John and Isaac, as executors of his will, and Sarah Hodgin, his widow, petitioned Hardin County Court to establish a town and to appoint five citizens of the vicinity as its trustees. Two days later, on February 9, 1818, the court approved the petition and entered an order in conformity with their request. Certainly, none of the Hodgin family members or their neighbors could have imagined in 1818 that a child of destiny had lived among them for nearly eight years, a child who had already moved with his parents and older sister to a small town in southern Indiana, a child born of semi-literate parents who would later become an accomplished lawyer, a statesman, and finally, our nation's first martyred president. About 20 years ago, I commissioned Lloyd Ostendorf, a world-renowned Lincoln artist from Dayton, Ohio, to create this painting. It depicts Thomas Lincoln as he waits by his horse at Hodgins Mill, while a young black boy proudly shows Abraham a fish he has caught in Nolan River. It is quite possible that a similar encounter actually could have occurred. When the assets of Robert Hodgins' estate were finally sold at auction in 1823, five slaves were bought by five different purchasers. Interestingly, none of Lincoln's many biographers appear to have ever discovered the rather certain exposure to slavery Abraham had as a child during his trips to Hodgins Mill with his father. Of the large land holdings of Robert Hodgins' estate, 27 and a half acres were donated, surveyed, and planted for 72 town lots. The sale of these lots did not begin in earnest until 1823. In 1826, the Hodginville Post Office was established. On March 4, 1843, the Kentucky State Legislature created LaRue County from a portion of Hardin County. It was named in honor of John LaRue, an early pioneer and settler. A courthouse was built the following year, 1844. The first LaRue County census taken in 1850 showed 246 people to reside within the boundaries of Hodgenville. By 1860, both Hodgenville and the nation had experienced dramatic changes. Lincoln had accepted his party's nomination to be president, and our nation was on the brink of civil war. Hodgenville's population had grown to 500. There were four churches, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Catholic. There were four doctors, five lawyers, 11 stores, a hotel, and 25 people possessing mechanical trades. On February 21, 1865, Hodgenville's courthouse, which had been used by Union soldiers as a barracks, was burned by Confederate guerrillas. The walls survived, and a new courthouse was constructed on the same site. In 1877, the Hodgenville Christian Church was constructed on the town square. During the 1880s and 90s, 
Hodgenville's population grew to 700. There were now nine lawyers, two barbers, two banks, two hotels, and four saloons. There were also blacksmiths, harness makers, hat makers, jewelers, tailors, and dressmakers. Whether the spike in the number of lawyers had any correlation to the four saloons is left to conjecture. On March 14, 1888, an H&E locomotive and train made the first run from the new Hodgenville Depot through Tonyville and on to Elizabethtown. H.D. LaRue was the first station master. On June 23, 1898, Woodrow Wilson, a Princeton University professor, lectured a large and appreciative audience in the Hodgenville Presbyterian Church. The subject of his speech, patriotism, was a timely topic considering that the Spanish-American War was then in progress. The Presbyterian Church was then located on the site where the LaRue County Public Library now stands. Incorporated in November 1897, Kenyon College was located in Hodgenville on College Street, where the former Hodgenville High School and Grade School now stands. This widely respected institution of higher learning provided opportunities for education to people throughout Central Kentucky for over 20 years. February 12, 1909. President Theodore Roosevelt and his entourage ascend the hill leading to the recently constructed one-room log cabin in which Abraham Lincoln was then thought to have been born. The occasion marked the very first visit by a presiding president to the place of nativity of Kentucky's most famous and revered native son and occurred on the 100th anniversary of Lincoln's birth. President Roosevelt concluded his address by characterizing Lincoln as the mightiest of the mighty men who mastered the mighty days. Before the cornerstone was ready for placement, President Roosevelt applied the first mortar with a silver trowel. The stone, a block of Connecticut granite weighing 3,000 pounds is located at the front right corner of the memorial building and is inscribed February 12, 1909. May 31, 1909, Robert Todd Lincoln left center. The 65-year-old son of Abraham Lincoln is seen meeting with Richard Lloyd Jones, secretary of the Lincoln Farm Association, at the Hodgenville Depot. Robert Lincoln later remarked at the unveiling of the statue that the bronze sculpture was a noble likeness of his father. New York sculptor Adolph A. Weinman left and Hodgenville attorney Charles Williams are seated at the Lincoln Monument. The unveiling of the Lincoln statue sculpted by Weinman culminated in the grandest day in Hodgenville's history. Williams gave the acceptance speech on behalf of the people of LaRue County and stated in part, we gave him to the nation. After many, many years, she returns to us, not his body or his ashes, but this bronze figure she gives unto us as a pledge of appreciation. We accept it that it may stand before coming generations who will pause beside its figure in its mute eloquence, pleading with them and inspiring in them a hope that we may always have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. November 9, 1911. President William Howard Taft was the distinguished guest at the dedication of the memorial building. He delivered a scholarly address that was well received by all who were present. The Hodgenville Vulcanizing Company, D.B. Munford, stands in front of his business, known primarily 
as a harness shop. It was in the rear section of this building that a fire originated, which destroyed 26 businesses and 19 residences in Hodgenville on the night of April 28, 1914. September 4, 1916, Labor Day. 18 years after his first visit to Hodgenville, Woodrow Wilson became the third successive U.S. president to visit Hodgenville and Lincoln's birthplace. Wilson's address in which he accepted the Lincoln Memorial and the property adjoining it on behalf of the government was brief, but couched in the language of a brilliant educator and former university president. September 18, 1917. LaRue County's draft quota for the Army has assembled in front of the courthouse in Hodgenville. More than 500 people, including school children and band members from Buffalo and Hodgenville, cheered the young men as they prepared to depart for Camp Zachary Taylor. The 60 future World War I soldiers heard many patriotic speeches, songs, and well wishes. Of these 60 men, nine died in France. Their names are recorded on a marble monument in front of the Women's Club building. October 21, 1923. David Lloyd George, the former English Prime Minister, stands before the statue of Abraham Lincoln in Hodgenville. The distinguished visitor stopped in front of the courthouse to inspect the monument of Lincoln and was received by citizens and schoolchildren who sang, God save the King and America, as he stood before them. June 14, 1936, Flag Day. President Franklin D. Roosevelt fulfilled no express purpose on that day other than to pay a silent tribute to the great emancipator. Standing with him inside the memorial building are from left Park Superintendent James Sissel, Colonel E. M. Watson, and then Governor A. B. Happy Chandler. April 23, 1954. President Dwight David Eisenhower is seen leaving the Women's Club building after a luncheon and brief program. He also delivered an address at the Memorial Building. February 12, 1959, the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's birth was a festive occasion in Hodgenville. My father, Carl Howe Sr. at left, the master of ceremonies, stands with Aunt Susan Garrett, as she was known, at a wreath-laying ceremony. Aunt Susan, an African-American, was born prior to the Civil War and was then believed to be 109 years old. The designation of Hodgenville's downtown historic district was followed by a whirlwind year of volunteer research and development that led to the opening of Kentucky's official Lincoln Museum on April 1st, 1989, in the former Middleton and Markham store. Over 1,000 charter members, sponsors, and dignitaries from across the state attended the preview gala. In 2002, the museum expanded into the former Dollar General building. February 12, 2002, on this day, a transfer ceremony occurred at the LaRue County High School that celebrated the conveyance of the Abraham Lincoln Boyhood Home at Knob Creek Farm to the National Park Service. More than 500 people attended the luncheon festivities. May 31, 2008, on this day, the dedication and unveiling of the Boy Lincoln a bronze sculpture created by the Daub Furman Hendrickson Sculpture Group of California took place on the town square. February 12, 
2009. All I can recall about the day of the highly anticipated Lincoln Bicentennial celebration kickoff is that we sure had one heck of an ice storm. I hope some of the information together with the visual documentation of Hodgenville's beginnings and up through the past 200 years has been entertaining and interesting. I thank you for your attention.